Hi, in this lesson, we're learning about using your community during events. So that way your community can benefit from the event for months or even years after. Hi, I'm Angel from RT Course Experts, and we help creative online course teachers with their tech. In this lesson, we're gonna go over using your community while hosting events. If you do the event, you put so much work into it, and at the end of the event, it could be just over. But if you leverage your community, your members, your students will enjoy and talk. It'll elevate your community. You, you can have all sorts of new knowledge, and it's really important to leverage your community in addition to just the chat box during your event. Let's go over leveraging your community. So there's two big things. One is, what does it do for the coach? What does it do for the teacher? First of all, it gives your members a place to learn and go deeper. So they're, they're at the event, they're learning different topics from speakers, but using the community. Secondly, your members benefit from not only the content and maybe people who missed it or the dialogues, the additional side discussions that happen, but also through all their peer relationships. So they're going to develop, oh, you do this, we do this too, or how do you guys handle this problem? There's going to be so many fruitful side conversations that get spawned from this event and the topics that you inspired as the teacher and coach, but the members are going to benefit from it for months or even years later. Let's go over a couple of things. First, we're going to talk about setting up for the big event, and then you have access, and then I'm going to go over some examples of some of the things you're going to talk about before, during, and after the big event. Let's start with setting up. First of all, you and your team should have a cheat sheet with all the essential information, the description, the name, the official name of the event, the date, the time zone, all the essential links, right? The webinar, the Zoom, the, the exact chat room, all these sort of hyperlinks that you might need to share on emails, share during in real time. So you're gonna to wanna to have all this information handy in a nice little cheat sheet that everybody has access to. And also in case it changes, everybody's always referring to the shared document that could be on a Google Drive or something like that. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to announce the community. So you're gonna to wanna to announce it during messages like in the chat Zoom, in marketing emails, during the live event where the host or one of the helpers can announce, hey, don't forget to join the community, join this room, go log on to so-and-so. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to create the official room. You might have several rooms. Maybe it's the event name pre-event or the main event, or depending on how many people you're expecting, how broad your topic is, you may have secondary rooms on specific things. So as an example, for me, I like to focus on not only courses, but communities and teacher websites. So I might have three topics, or maybe you have one for the main event, the topic, let's just say it's artificial intelligence, and then the other could be an answers, other or miscellaneous topics. During your setup, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have all your slides, your microsite, maybe it's just a page, Maybe it's PDFs, but you're going to want to set up everything and in there have links so that it's cross-referencing all the different assets and different places to watch the stream or to engage with the community. And since community rooms often have the ability to pin a post or a couple of messages, you may want to pin that. So within not only within your outer room to announce the event, but within, for those that have registered and are actually at the event, you may want to pin a particular message at the very top. So as they're all tabbing in and out, as they're scrolling, looking for information, hey, where's the schedule again? All that stuff is pinned at the very top of the event name chat room. Now let's talk about access. So you should have a very standardized registration process. 
it's going to be weeks coming, right, up to your big event. So there should be a very well-known, documented way, maybe even in your cheat sheet, that explains to everybody how to join, register, how to get access. And then when that happens, you automatically get access to your room. Uh, maybe the room has a, a vanity URL as well as the link. So it's like register. So you have your website forward slash event name. So it has a nice friendly URL, and then it's also consistent across all your other links so that your community maybe has a section that's the name of the event, or maybe if you're on Slack, you have a chat room panel that's exactly the name of your event. You're going to want to make sure everybody gets added. So if possible, try to use settings like roles and configurations or tags so that you can quickly add people to the event. And you may want to have a nice cross check reference the night before, a few days before, to make sure that everybody has really been added and they have the right tags. And, and that's another reason why you may want to have people do introductions, just to make sure that people are flowing and are accessing your community room for the event. You're going to want to have a community manager, sort of like tech support, to handle problems. Hey, I can't get in. Where's that other room? Is this link working for everybody? Maybe it's even feedback on the events. Is the audio okay or is the, the video stuttering? So you're gonna want somebody to be on point for helping individuals or to identify bigger issues across the board that you're bringing back to your AV team so that you can make sure that maybe the speaker's mic is not working or a little bit off on the shirt. So you're gonna wanna have that person that's on tech support helping people get in, and then of course during the event. And finally on the access, you're gonna to wanna to link up parallel content. So for example, if you're running a Zoom, there might be a chat box. So in that chat, you're gonna to point to the community as well as in the community, you're gonna to point to the link of the Zoom and then maybe make resources available, right? And then also sometimes there's some rich information in that chat Zoom that you're gonna to wanna to say, ooh, that one's a really important one, let's bring that one over. And sometimes it could be done in live, in live real time, or you may wanna just extract that and make those available to the community members over time. Hey, here's some good topics, some additional resources that were shared. It might not even be your resources, it might be from some of the members who are cross-sharing different tools or websites or resources. So you're gonna to wanna to not lose all that valuable information. So let's go into the actual chatting of the event. So we've set up, everybody has access, the event is on, right? So let's go over some of the topics that you might wanna talk about before the event, during the event, and after the event. So before the event, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that access is set up, you may want to prompt the folks, hey, why don't you introduce yourself? T tell us what you do, share your website, what's your industry? And then you may want to connect by, by demographics. So by this, you might say, hey, everybody share where you're from. You know, And you may not want to do this at the same time. You may want to do this in stages. So a few days before, people are doing introductions. And then a few days later, maybe it's, uh, hey, where's everybody from? People may wanna start sharing their top problems and challenges before the event. So you as the speaker, as the authority, as the coach, you can scan that and make sure that you're hitting some of those popular topics. Before the event, you're gonna provide date and time reminders, including time zone, and you're gonna build up. Hey, two days left, one day, it's tomorrow, uh, starting in three hours. So all those kinds of messages could easily be done in a community as well as your social media and other communications that you have. And another thing that people can do is that they can collect official questions. So you've been seeing all the chat with your members, but you can also set up a form where people can submit an official question and maybe a handful of those are addressed during the event. And of course, you're going to have some backup questions just in case there are no questions, or maybe that backup question is the first question, and you use that as just to get going with the flow. So that way there's no hiccups, and while somebody's collecting those live questions or those 
uh, already submitted questions. You can have those seconds ago, and then the live ones can come in third place, but at least you have a, a queue of questions ready to go. During the event, you're going to stoke your audience. They're going to get excited. They're going to be happy for the event. And everybody's going to be rah, rah, I can't wait. And what are you most excited for? All those kinds of things. And, and your people are going to react. You're going to ask questions. So during the event, you're going to empathize with others. Uh, oh yeah, me too. Or, or the members in your community will say, oh, that, that happens to me or hang in there. You'll get to that goal state. Some people might be sharing photos or emojis or jiffies based on something that's being discussed. Of course, you're going to have live technical support. You might want to take them off the main channel or DM them about, oh yeah, let me double check that or I'll get you that access later or I'll make sure you get that PDF later. So that way you don't kill the flow. During the event, you might want to take polls. You might also want to do some polls before, but during a certain topic comes up in real time, you might want to ask or you might want to have one or two polls ready to go and then during the event you can use them or it might even be an emergency thing where if there's a technical issue while people are waiting you might want to have a poll in your back pocket that you put out there to keep the audience going during the event or near the end of it there's maybe an offer or a deal or a coupon so you're going to want to have that pre-written ready to go and a nice way to just maybe it's a hyperlink to a particular sales page or maybe it's a blurb with some text and information you're going to want to have those pre-written and ready to be shared and of course during the event you may want to even talk about sponsors like advertisers and give them a moment or two or talk about your favorite tools and just provide goodwill to your ecosystem now after the event you're going to collect feedback you might have a survey for your members. You're going to find different partners. So maybe uh, somebody in your community is looking for somebody to help them with a particular topic or looking for other types of people like them. Maybe they're musicians or maybe they're audio editors, whatever it is that they are. They might be looking for friends or maybe a mastermind or cohort. So you're going to want to help them. They're going to want to talk. That's some of the conversations that's going to happen. So you may not, you're not going to want to shut down your community. You're going to want to leave it up for a while. People are going to be sharing pictures of maybe not just the event, but maybe of themselves after doing something. Hey, here's what happened when I tried that thing, or look, here's my to-do list, right? So they're going to share their stuff and then they're going to share other resources. During the event, they might've been too much and they're digesting it. And they'll come back another day and provide, oh yeah, now that I thought about it, I do know about this resource, or I looked up this thing and I'd like to share it with everybody in case it helps others. You're going to have the chat log from the event. So in the chat, not only the Zoom, but the community, there might have been some topics that you want to just flag or some good questions, but you weren't able to answer it in real time. So over time, whether you're the, the leader or one of the community members, you're going to want to go over those and get that extra information and share it, share answers or your research. As well as the community is going to allow your members to communicate with themselves through direct messages. And finally, maybe potentially months later, you're going to want to archive the chat. You're shutting down the room eventually, or maybe you leave it up for just until the next event starts, maybe a year later or several months later, but you're gonna to wanna to leave it there. But as a process, you'll probably have a standard operating procedure to archive that room. So remember, the events can really energize and lift communities for many months after the actual event. So if you have a community, you should leverage it in addition to whatever chat is happening during your event. So now you're a lot smarter on using your community with your events. So to summarize, you'll want to set up that community in addition to whatever chat is available during your events. You'll want to get it ready. You'll want to use it and then let people party on that information, those rich learning resources and really discuss with their peers for many months after. If you want to level up just a little baby step, in addition to your Zooms, 
go ahead and set up that community room. That would be a great first step. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. If you're loving this stuff, subscribe to keep leveling up your creative business. And if you need any tech help with your courses, community, or teacher website, visit www.rtcourseexperts.com. Thanks for hanging out. Let's stay in touch.